I'm going to talk about two things before we go on this. This is our package offensively. And I'm going to tell you, we have tags inside of all these things. So, you know, we're, we're a, a midline team, option-wise, we run midline triple a little bit. Um, inside veer, veer tab and outside veer are our main option plays. We think we can run that against any front. If I have time at the end, I'm going to talk about inside veer Ted. I think it's the best play in football, in my mind. Um, and outside gear, I put a star by those again because those are our big things. We run belly ISO, we run belly uh, belly G, we run belly option, um, we run wing counters that they put up there, we run jet sweep, we run rocket, we run county ISO. People say, oh my God, you guys do a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, we do. Here's what I will tell you about kids. If you make them learn it, they will learn it. I've been at places, and I, I just had a great conversation with Rick Darlington, one of my best friends down in Florida. He's convinced that his average ACT of his score is, is low teens. They have about 10 times more than that. If you make kids learn it, your kids will learn it. If you use it as a crutch, say, you know what, oh my gosh, that's too much stuff. I, I just don't believe in that. So we throw a lot of stuff at our kids. Um, the big thing we want to talk about is when you look at flex bone people, um, you'll see a lot of people who are double split, double slot. That's how true flex bone, when people came out, they said that is what flex bone, the formation is. It's funny, I actually, we joke about this, I got kicked off the Flexbone site message board about 10 years ago because I was talking about how we're in, we're in, we're in tackle over all the time. And the, the runner of this site said, that is not Flexbone. I said, I don't care what it is, it's what we do with our double wing. <coughs> well, the funny thing was, like three or four years later, if you watch Georgia Tech play, they are in tackle over all the time. So when you watch our clips, we are about 70% Back when we were full option, unbalanced single or uh, unbalanced flex bone. And I'm going to tell you why we did it. The exact opposite reason why people said they didn't do it. People, what they said was they didn't want to see funky fronts. When you lined up with double split, you knew how people were going to line. I get that. If you think back, and, and, and maybe this is just a problem down by us, Clay could probably attest to this. We see very few people who are running true tight ends anymore. People are used to having outside linebackers backed off the ball. They're in coverage, they're, they're in RPOs, they're blitzing. I want to make that kid come up and play defense on a tight end. I want to shift tight ends so the kid who repped all week that he's going to jam the tight end, who probably hasn't done that much all year, now I'm going to have a kid who hasn't done it probably in two years come up and do that. So that's the first reason. I want people to defend A gap, B gap, C gap, D gap, and E gap. Without a tight end, we lose a gap that they have to defend. We have enough plays where, where we think we can attack every gap. By losing a gap, we lose ways to attack that we think that the advantage goes to defense. With, with the multiple defenses, the blitzes, the shifting, we, we think that's one card that we still have in our back pocket. The second thing is this, and it's crazy when you watch our film. Really simple way how we do it. Okay? We tell our quarterback to come up to the line of scrimmage. He looks right down the center. And you can do this in any offense you run. For the first, for anybody under 10 yards, okay, the first two levels, it's simple. If they're on this side of the line, it's a full count. If they're on that side of the line, it's a full count. If they're touching the midline, it's a half. Okay, very, very simple. Anybody over 10 yards, we tell them two arm lengths from the center line counts towards the middle, does that make sense? So if Jake is the center, and I'm a free safety at 14 yards, and I'm standing right here, the quarterback will look, I'm two arm lengths from the center, we're gonna count that as a half play or not a full, because the angle we think can get to the other side. Now, over two arm lengths, we're counting this as a full player towards the field side. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you line up in unbalanced formations, people do not know how to defend them. Especially when you put unbalanced formations into the boundary, which we made a killing on at Bradford. So I told them we're going to unbalance 70% of the time, 60% of the time that unbalanced formation would be into the boundary. People cannot tell themselves, they've got six and a half players over there, and they're going to put the free safety four yards from the sidelines. We would have people say, why are you always running the boundary? Because they have a balanced defensive formation, we have an unbalanced offensive formation, and we have numbers. And that's the, that's the reason why you run option football. It's about putting people who are less, have less ability to have success against people who might be better than them. All right, so you'll see, I just want to explain, you'll see a lot of, and I'll talk about numbers that are going here, a lot of 
um, situation where we have the balanced formation and very little true double split. Okay. That's just a little bit about when Ford's to be successful. Keep moving, Jay. Keep going. All right, so here's counter ISO. If you want any sort of ISO play, I'm going to give you a really simple way of calling it. Here's what we tell our kids. I was um, explaining to a gentleman out there before. Each one of our offensive players, here's how we're able to run a lot of plays. Each one of our offensive players owns the play. So when we run counter ISO, our weak guard owns that play. And if you guys want this, you don't want to take pictures, just give uh, Jake your email. He'll send it to you. He'll email it to you at the end. Our, our guard's going to come up to the line of scrimmage. He's going to look. Okay? How can we part the C with this play? And we do the same thing when we run belly ISO. So he's going to say, is there a guy in the B gap or not as he sends me what he's looking for? He's going to make one of two calls. If he can base his guy and squeeze him in, he's going to say, Moses, Moses, Moses. That's telling our guys that it's going to be a B gap play right here. That's a B gap play, Moses, Moses, Moses. He's the only guy making that call. The tackle listens to the guard. <clears throat> he comes out here and he says, oh my gosh, I can't go down. All right, there's a guy who comes to the B gap. I'm not guaranteed my tackle can block him. He looks at him, he says, out, out. So every time we run any isolation play, we can, we can motion our guy to the back and run I iso. It's a Moses or an out, out call. By our quick guard, he makes it. He comes down, oh no, no, no. No one can override it. No one else should be talking except for dummy calls on the backside. That simple. He's the only guy. So we only have to teach one guy the rules of the play. He listens for him to tell him what to do. He doesn't override that. That's all quotes. If he tells you to out, out, then you freaking both go out. If he tells you Moses, you block your guy out, and I'm coming down. So that's how all of our isolation blocks are with the Moses out, out rule. All we're doing is, we're running inside beer. We're, we're faking beer 10 over here. We can drill these up out of the balance. Okay? Faking inside beer, leave the ball on our hip. People say you want to put it in there and right out. That, that's fumbles. This offense, you can't turn the ball over. Put the ball on your hip, leave it on your hip. Our play side slot, we're inside foot up, hand on, forearms on the thigh boards. He is open and attacking the outside hip of the quarterback. Our slot, he has play side middle linebacker. If the guy's going to blitz in the B gap, go get him right now. One thing that we tell our kids all the time, we still do it now with our single wing stuff, we call it performance alignment. You align where you have to align to make the block they need a block. If I tell you you have to have a three-foot split and we're doubling and you can't double the three-foot split, for fuck's sake, go foot to foot and get the gosh and double team going. All right? Having the right split and not making the block does me no good. Get your feet foot to foot and get the double. Now, where the, the coaching part, I apologize for the up I've been working on those. Actually, for 13 years. It's getting better. It's getting better. Um, it's not getting better, Coach Ruff. Okay. Uh, your whole line has to watch, hey, every time we're running counter ice, so we got four foot splits, and every time we're running outside here, we got three inch splits. That's where the coaching part has when you're not, when you let your kids have flexibility with that. All right, let me hop on for a cut-ups, Jake. All right. 